Ah, Mr. Hackstrom. I didn't expect that you until tomorrow. How's it coming, Pablo? Huh. See for yourself. Looks okay. I show you masterpiece and you say, okay, you have a soul of a goat. Yeah. Just as long as you can't tell the difference between this and the real thing. There is no difference to the naked eye. Of course, when you check the serial numbers. Pablo. Yeah? Let us worry about that. Okay. Central, I appreciate that information. Yeah, you've been a big help. 10-4. The night watchman found him, Commissioner, around 6 o'clock this morning. Medical examiner figures he's been dead maybe two, three days. Pablo Javier and I go back some 10 years when I nailed him for printing up no good mutual tickets. What's the connection? You two didn't bring me down here to look at a small-time forger. No, sir, but do you remember the murder of Ito Mirabushi last December, sir? Remember? I thought the Emperor was going to come down himself and take over the case personally. Well, sir, we just got a ballistics match on the... Already? It was fast. Yes, sir. And the same gun that killed Mirabushi also killed our friend Pablo here. Well, I thought Mirabushi's death was a simple... Mugging? What about... Well, you can leave out robbery in this case, sir. Pablo still had his wallet on him, and it contained almost $300. Real money? Uh, Pablo never printed greenbacks, sir. Not that he couldn't do it, but he never liked fooling with the feds. Uh-huh. Well, I admire your speed on the ballistics match, but I can't believe that you got his fingerprints already. We didn't, sir. Well, there's ink on his hand. Maybe he was working on something at the time he was killed. If we can find out what that was, maybe we can find out why Mirabushi was killed and or who killed him. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Dave. Anything for the room, sir? Of course. You want to tell me about it? What room? The chain. The human chain. The pollution freaks are going to line up across the Bay Bridge and at 5 o'clock. Oh, it's news to me. What are you planning to do about it? Well, we'll send them some units. Commissioner. What is it? Uh, Commissioner. But if it's a peaceful <laughs> assembly. Commissioner, I have to tell you something. <laughs> is that all? No, there's more. But you just can't arrest people for demonstration. Arrest? Are you kidding? A handful of kids against thousands of hot, sweaty commuters? We'll just try to prevent a massacre. Commissioner, huh. this is McMillan is waiting in your office. Oh, thank you. You know, you really ought to do something about that cold. I am. I'm sneezing. You got all that? <sighs> Hi, Sally. Stuart. Mother. Oh. You're looking wonderful, Stuart, considering your age. <laughs> And you've grown, too, haven't you? Either that, or I've shrunk. Oh, Mother, I'm sure you haven't. You never can tell. I met this adorable plantation owner in Caracas. Bananas, I think it was, or was it coffee beans? Mother. Carlos, a dear man, but I towered over him. He was a little in love with me, but I never really could think of him in that way. And then, one night, the drums began beating in the jungle, voodoo drums. And the next day... There was Carlos looking down on me. Mother. Now, maybe he stuffed paper in his shoes, but if you ask me, those drums were aimed at me. Mother, forget about the drums. Now, why haven't you called or written? But I did, last week. Now? No. Last week, I was in Marseille. They had that terrible problem with the telephone company. Look at this. Mac, you've done so well. But I intended to write, and that's practically the same thing. Practically. Now, don't keep me in suspense any longer. How is the baby? Oh, he's wonderful. Boy or girl? Mother, I just told you. I can't wait to see him. And his mother, too. Of course. Yes, of course. Now, don't be critical. After all, I am your mother, and the least you could do is to pretend to be glad to see me. But I am. You and Sally never write. We never know where you are. Well, I'm right here. And that's wonderful. 
Well, of course it is, because I'm a wonderful mother. Now, you needn't worry that I'm here to stay. This is a very short visit. Oh, no. This time we're going to spend some time together. Oh, Stuart, I have to tell you about your sister. Megan? What is it? I don't quite know how to tell you, but... but Megan is getting married. Married? What? Well, I mean, she's only oh, a child. child, yes. It's my first reaction, but, Stuart, really, she's 27 and well past time. She had a life of her own. Traipsing around the continents with an old woman may be all right when you're 16, but enough is enough. Anyway, Randy is just a darling boy. I know you're going to love him. Uh, wait a minute now. You mean uh, Megan and this, and this boy are, uh, are here in town? Yes, of course. Macmillans have been getting married in San Francisco since the days of the gold rush. These two are not going to be any different. But uh, who is he? I mean, what do we know about him? Well, they met in the Virgin Islands about five months ago. His name is Randy Newmark, and he comes from one of the finest families in Rochester, New York. He's just terribly bright. He's a fine mind for business. I just know he's going to be a millionaire before he's 40. And uh, I just knew that if there was anybody smart enough to jump at a chance like this, it'd be you folks here at TAMCO. Newmark, Trans-Alaska mining success speaks for itself. Now, just what is it you're proposing? Yes, sir. Well, uh, Mr. Kovacs, uh, like it shows here on the map, you've got about uh, 200,000 acres of abandoned gold mines and uh, silver. And... You know, sir, with the price of gold and silver going up the way it is, it certainly does pay to go back in there and start digging. <laughs> Now, you didn't come in here to explain to me how we run our operations, no, did you? No, sir, I did not. I, I came here to talk to you about people. Yes, sir, people. The backbone of a company. But, sir, in, in order to keep them productive, you've got to keep them happy. Now, I, I know you're going to have a, uh, about a thousand employees up there by the end of the year. And that's why I figured, well, sir, you just got to have a country club. Country club. Yes, sir, with a golf course and, uh, and a little spa. Now, that's why I bought this little piece of land. It's, it's not very big. It's only about a, a thousand acres, but, sir, it's got genuine hot springs on it. And lots of good building sites for homes and... Uh, We're not interested, no now, now, you just let me finish up here, sir. The fact is, uh, well, I paid a, a good deal of money for that land, about $300,000. And I... Uh, I owe about another five hundred thousand dollars. Now that's why I thought that maybe you could uh, put up the rest of the money, just just as a sort of loan. You understand? And I could give you oh ten uh, percent of my operation uh, once I get it going. Now I, I have uh, some plans here to show the, the layout of the golf course and the uh, you mark save your breath. The home. Save your breath. Look, let me explain something to you. We don't need your little thousand acres if we were going to put up a recreation center, which we are not. Yeah. Secondly, for this kind of money, we would demand at least half interest in your development. Half? Half. Oh, uh, listen, uh, maybe it'd be better if I spoke to Mr. Ridgely himself. Mr. Ridgely will not be in until Monday. Anyhow, I am empowered to make this sort of decision. Well, you... let me explain something to you. And let me give you a little word of advice. Never dive in the deep end of a pool unless you can swim. Now, you're in over your head. Cut your losses. Get out while you can. A written proposal. Now, I could... Don't waste written... your time. I see. Well, uh, Mr. Kovacs, it certainly was nice to meet you. And uh, uh, if you should change your mind, I've, I've left my phone number with your secretary. Fine. Have a nice day now. Thank you very much. It's okay, kid. The place is clean. How'd it go? It's a rip. Thinks I'm a class A jerk. Toss me out of my ear. So now we stick to the cheese and the trap, and if Alan Kovacs is the rat I think he is, he's about to bite off more than he can chew. Maybe so, Harry. If he goes for it before Burton Ridgely gets back on Monday. Remember, Kovacs is stupid. Ridgely isn't. Oh, don't worry, Jack. I've been plucking pigeons like Kovacs for 30 years. You get a feeling about guys like that. He's ripe like a soft brown banana waiting to be peeled. 
When's the uh, unpeel from here? First thing tomorrow morning. Have faith, kid. Harry's good. Real good. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> Minutes, don't flatter yourself. A little something to jog your memory. Nice. Mm. I don't think my memory needs any jogging. How'd it go? Oh, I don't know, Megan. I don't think it's such a good deal. Really? Everybody's making so much money with them. Didn't you say that Howard Wilkins doubled his investment in 90 days? We are, believe me. And I think we're going to be much better off with the condominium in Hawaii. It's a lot safer. Safe? If the Wright brothers played it safe, we'd be rowing to Hawaii. Would you like to drive, woman? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. We're going to be 15 minutes late already. <sighs> Mustn't be late for the in-laws. You're really going to like my brother. Oh, I'm sure. You're a lot alike, you two. Anyway, he's probably not even at the restaurant yet. He's probably down at City Hall talking with the mayor. The mayor? What is he, a politician? Didn't I tell you? Max, the police commissioner. the ink on his fingers. Well, sir, it looks like Lieutenant Callahan was right. Uh, whatever Pablo What's-His-Name was printing, it wasn't U.S. currency. But he was working on something. Well, sir, about uh, six weeks ago, he took a basement office on Calaveras Avenue, and he paid for it in advance in cash. And he moved in this printing press. But there's nothing there now, sir. The place has been cleaned out. Where is he staying? Uh, we're checking that out now, sir. Okay, keep at it. Sally, where have you two Hi. been? I've been trying to track you down all afternoon. Oh, dancing at the Escadero, lunch at the top of Mad Impetuous Day. We've been shopping. Commissioner, could you take one of these? My good knee is going. You know, why didn't you tell me you were going to be home? I never would have hired that babysitter. Do you know what they're charging the me? The babysitter days? is gone. We have uh, company. Wonderful. Who? Family company. My mother's in Houston with Uncle George. My family. Your family? My family. Sally. Sally, dear. Mother McMillan. Oh, oh God. Mm. <laughs> this is a surprise, dear. It certainly is, dear. Oh, you sweet, precious thing. Let me look at you. <gasps> Heavens, I'm so jealous. You look so young. And just having had that superb little fellow up there, you must tell me what you use. And I suppose this is Muriel. Mildred, mother. Oh, Mildred, of course. I've heard so much about you. Tell me, the steward still leave his shorts under the bed. I wouldn't know, Mrs. McMillan. I try to go under the bed as little as possible. Uh, Mildred, why don't you beat it? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, my very thought, Commissioner. <sighs> well, uh, <laughs> here we are. Mm. How long has it been since you two have seen each other? Oh, must be six years. Two months and 14 days. Now, isn't that precious? I wasn't sure you'd remember. Well, that was the day that Mac and I got married. Oh, has it really been that long? Well, Sally, I know you'll be so happy to know there's going to be another wedding in the family. Mother McMillan. Please, Sally, darling. Just Beatrice. Uh, you make me feel like Grandma Moses. Well, you've been alone too long, Beatrice. Oh, heavens, no, not me. No, indeed. No, 23 years with Stuart's father was marriage enough for anyone. No, I mean Megan. Meg? Did you hear that, Mac? That's fabulous. Yes, I, I heard that. If I'm going to make another meatloaf, I have to go get some more hamburger. Hold it, Mildred. Forget the meatloaf. I made a reservation at the lobster trap, and we're late already. Stuart, you really should have insisted that Sally and Muriel join us. That's what I did, but Sally was exhausted, and Mildred made a date with her sister. Well, only because you wouldn't let her visit her sister for the rest of the week. Mother, believe me, when Muriel volunteers to visit her sister, it's generally out of desperation, not <laughs> devotion. Oh, I couldn't. Not on top of the bourbon. Burgundy, Mother. Burgundy? Uh, I, I, I... All right, you two lovebirds. I think now is the spot where I say a few badly chosen words. Wonderful, a toast. Don't make a fool of yourself, Mac. 
a little respect, please. Meg, Randy, here's to your troubles. May they all be small ones. Here's to your heartaches. May they all pass by as quickly as they came. And most of all, may you have as much happiness as I've had with Sally the last six years. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thanks. I think it's time we retreated to the powder room. Don't worry. Your brother doesn't get vicious until the stroke of 12. <laughs> Don't count on it. <clears throat> well, well now, I, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. You go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 no. You, you go ahead. No, no, no I insist. Please. No, no, no. I insist. Well, uh, sir. Mac. People call me Mac, whether they know me or not. Mac. I, uh, I guess this comes as something of a shock to you. I mean, you really don't know very much about me at all. That's true. But there's one thing I want you to understand. I love Mick. Very, very much. Oh, I can see that. Now, as far as my, uh, prospects are concerned, I have an investment in a condominium in Hawaii, which I uh, hope will be a profitable one, and uh, perhaps will lead to other things. If not, I uh, have a good background. I was born in Rochester, and I attended Choate Prep School. Choate? When was that? Uh, 12, uh, 13 years ago. Well, then you must know Charlie Clark. Clark? Yeah, football. Halfback. He's about your age. His father's one of our chief inspectors. Charlie Clark? <laughs> Yeah, of course. I mean, everybody knew of him. Uh, wouldn't have had much of a team without him. I doubt that he'd remember me, however. Oh, here, let me have it. No, 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 I'll take it. Come on. No, now. this time, this one's... Saturday, you start paying the bills. This one's on me. Listen, don't, uh, Don't worry about Megan. We're gonna be just fine. I know you will. Mac, how should we do the, the monogram on the silver? Should we do R with a big N and a little M, or should we just do R-N, plain? Oh, just give them money. That's too impersonal. Well, then give them a personal check. Mac, we've got to give them something special now. Charlie Clark. Who's Charlie Clark? He never went to Choate. Neither did I. Neither did Randy. What? Tonight at the restaurant, Randy told me he went to Choate and that he knew Charlie Clark. You know Ed Clark's son? Uh-huh. Well, I knew something was wrong, and it just now hit me. Charlie Clark never went to Chode. He went to Harkness. So? So he lied to me. In three days, your sister is going to marry a very charming young man, and already you're acting like a cop. I am not. You are, too. Well, I'm not, either. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You deliberately trapped him into a fib. I did not. You did. Besides, do you know how many Charlie Clarks there are in the world? Why would he lie, anyway? I don't know. He can't be a fortune hunter. Your mom and Meg don't exactly have a lot of money. Okay, okay, let's change the subject. Okay. Do you remember our wedding night? Uh-huh. Do you think I'm as beautiful as I was then? Now, don't lie. You're even more beautiful. You sure don't act like it. Yes, Mother. Well, is there something wrong in there? No, no, everything's just fine. Isn't that nice? No fight. Night, Stuart. Good night, Mother. Say good night, Mac. Good night. Hi, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. I don't believe that I've ever seen you before. Maggie's home with a cold. I'm Kathy. Sergeant Enright. Charlie's okay. Easy. That's nice. Uh, wh what's nice? That Charlie's okay. Who's Charlie? Uh, no, no, I meant that uh, you can call me Charlie. Oh, then that must be your name. Uh, right. Uh, I love the name Charlie. You do? Uh, it's my husband's name, too. Uh-huh. Now, what can I do for you, Sergeant? Is he here? I'm not sure. I mean, he's in the office, but I'm not sure he's here. Uh, 
Yes? Sergeant Enright to see you, sir. Send him in. Go right, Captain. Thanks. Good morning. Bad morning. Do you know what it's like to try to read the newspaper in the kitchen among four jabbering women? No, sir, not really. Anyway, it won't last forever. Put that in writing and I'll hold you to it. What have you got? Well, sir, we finally managed to trace Pablo Javier to the Crestmont Hotel. Uh, Javier. Beg pardon, sir? Javier, not Javier. Uh, the, the J is silent. You pronounce it like a ha. Ha, Javier. Uh, I can't say that, sir. Anyway, he's been a guest at this hotel and registered there for two weeks. There wasn't too much to find, except these. What is it? This, sir, is rag parchment. Looks like he was trying various inks. Now, the lab boys say that this isn't used for currency, but for certificates, stocks, bonds, that sort of thing. You mean he was counterfeiting stocks and bonds? Well, we don't know that for sure, sir. Any tie-in with the death of that, that Japanese Mirab... Mirabushi, sir. Uh, nothing that we can find, sir. Uh, well, keep trying. If you find anything out, let me know. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir? I want you to check out somebody else for me. Oh, right away, sir. His name is Randall Newmark III. Born in Rochester, New York, 1945. I'm not sure the exact date. Newmark? Isn't that the guy your sister's going to marry? Well, that's precisely why I want him checked out. Any particular reason? Yes. I mean, no. I, I don't know. Just do it. Yes, sir. And not a word about this to Mrs. McMillan. Which one, sir? Either one. You can count on me. Okay. Frank Teasdale, geological engineer. What can I do for you, Mr. Teasdale? Well, you can start by making this check good. $10,000? Is this some kind of a joke? It's not even our check. Well, it better be. The young fella gave me said it was being backed by Tambacol. Randall Newmark the third. Wait a minute. Is he about 30 years old, dark hair, pleasant, kind of eager? Yeah, that's the feeling. Now, where do I find him? Don't ask me. I threw him out of this office yesterday. Him and his crazy golf course. Golf course? What golf course? I don't know. He explained something to me about buying some land adjacent to our holdings and he was going to put a country club up on it or something. Golf course. <laughs> that's what he told you? Well, that's funny. What's funny? Oh, nothing. You know, these crazy kids trying to make it big overnight. Well, thank you, Kovax. Sorry I trapped you. Teasdale. Why would he give you a $10,000 check for a geological survey? Now, did I say that? Well, that must have been a slip of the tongue. Dan. You call me out? Yeah, that little guy who just left, you can still catch him. I want you to follow him. Find out where he goes and who he sees. Something wrong? I don't know. Maybe that kid who came in here yesterday is not as dumb as he looks. Impossible, Mrs. McMillan. Saturday is out. Oh, you're just being stubborn. And you, Mrs. McMillan, are being impossible. I have a golf game with the bishop at 10 o'clock. Oh, twaddle. I'm waiting at 4, and I have two baptisms, and I have to prepare a Sunday sermon. And in that regard, may I say, you have proved to be a singular inspiration. Perhaps you could just squeeze us in the morning early before your golf match. Oh, my dear child, the sacrament of marriage is a feast. You want me to be a short order cook? Otis Coffey, you married my son, you married me, you married my husband's parents that before was that. was my father. Well, we did not travel halfway around the world to be treated like itinerants from Oakland. Well, well perhaps. Sunday, late in the afternoon. Reverend, we have to leave for Hawaii late Saturday night. Yes. Randy was quite specific about that. Something about business, I believe. Stuart, Stuart, this is terrible. What happened? Reverend Coffey. He refuses to marry the children on Saturday. Some silly excuse about another wedding. Now, Stuart, I want you to tell this old fool that he's behaving just like... 
Just like an old fool. You see, he admits it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commissioner, but at such short notice, it just isn't possible. Well, look, Meg, why doesn't Randy fly to Hawaii, do what he has to do, and come back here and have your wedding next Saturday? I'm flying to Hawaii with Randy on Saturday night, married or otherwise. I just won't hear of it. Oh, Mother, stop being an old prune. Randy and I are both adults. There's nothing wrong with a physical relationship, with or without benefit of all this. Right, Mac? What? Uh... Fiddle. I wasn't born yesterday, children. In fact... What? what? Never mind that. The important thing is that every Macmillan but three since 1849 has been married in San Francisco. And the three that didn't... Well... One was hanged as a horse thief. Another sailed on the maiden voyage of the Titanic. And the last one ended up living in New York City. And I don't intend to see anything like that happen to my daughter. Be careful, Reverend. When my mother sets her jaw like that, she's going to get her way one way or another. Mm. Well, maybe I can squeeze them in on Saturday at 2 o'clock. If I can get the bishop to play fast. But he has a tendency. To pray a lot over his eight-foot putts. <laughs> Two o'clock it is. Now run along, children, before this aging Arnold Palmer changes his mind. Shoo! Shoo! Oh, oh, if it were anybody but you, Beatrice McMillan. Oh, just coffee. You're a pussycat. <laughs> oh, Sorry to run off like this, but we were supposed to meet the hotel people ten minutes ago. Oh, my. In that case, I'd better drive. Now, Mother, remember the speed limit. Copper. The kid's land is loaded with copper. Sure looks like he fell into something and doesn't even know it. Oh, he knows about it, all right. Don't worry about that. That guy Teasdale is one of the country's top geologists. Golf course, huh? Some golf course. He wants a half a million from me at a lousy 10%. He's sitting on 12 to 15 million bucks. Well, I'm going to have to have another little talk with Mr. Newmark about his golf course. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, if we were to end up owning a real mine... We might even become legitimate. Hey, you want to get your finger broken? That's for supper. Put it back. Mildred, I won't be here for supper. Well, you're hungry? I'll make you a sandwich. Sit down. No, 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 no. That's, that's all right. No, if you get malnutrition, the commissioner will blame me. Let me see. Some bread. Right. No bread. Well, that's okay, Mildred. Forget the bread. Well, maybe a little soup, a little salad. A little... No, no, a little patience. Wait a minute. No, where's the bread? Where would she... Hey, Mildred, that's the dishwasher? Yeah, I know that, and you know that. But would the commissioner's mother know that? Okay, 
Hey, lady, where'd you put it? Come on. Just a sec. Okay, you're the detective. What goes with bread? Bread and butter? Okay, butter, but no bread. Mildred, I'll just have a couple of cookies. Bread and water. She wouldn't put it in the bathtub, would she? Oh, well, of course. How could I be so stupid? What is it? Well, we went to the store this morning. She insisted on buying oven-baked bread. I'm awfully glad she didn't want any head cheese. No, Mother, I am not going to wear a swallowtail coat, especially when nobody but the family is going to be there. Well, I'm not going to give away your sister looking like a bum. A brand new stylish dark blue suit does not make me look like a bum. Commissioner? Oh, uh, excuse me. This is my mother, Mrs. Uville, and Mrs. Sergeant and Wright. How awfully nice it's to meet my you. My pleasure. Uh, how's Mrs. McMillan, sir? Oh, she's, she's fine. She's upstairs resting. Now, Sergeant, I want your honest opinion about something. Now, never mind that I am the commissioner and you are just a sergeant with seven years left to go until your pension. I'm glad you're not loading the questions. Sir. Right. Now, which do you think would be more appropriate for a wedding in the afternoon with just the family? A nice, neatly pressed, dark suit or a moth-eaten, rented set of tails with a too heavily starched collar that probably doesn't fit? Well, sir, I've always believed that special occasions require special attention, especially weddings and funerals. They're both so final. You see. I'll see you in my office first thing in the morning. Well, sir, if, if you need something to wear, my cousin Bernie runs a rental shop on Fremont Street. And, uh, oh, there is just one more thing, sir. Hello. Uh, about you-know-who? Who? About the gentleman you asked me to check out this morning. Well, if we could talk in private. Yes, let's talk privately. Stuart? Yes, Mother? You didn't. Uh, didn't what? He did, didn't he? No, ma'am, I did. Stuart, you are incorrigible. Your own brother-in-law. He's not my brother-in-law yet. Go ahead, Sergeant. Well, sir, I don't know how you found out, but nobody named Randall Newmark III ever lived in Rochester or went to Choate School or any of those things. Thank you. Very good. Nevertheless, I'll see you in my office first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Good night, Mrs. McDonald. Good night. Now, Mother, before you say one word, let's understand one thing. Meg is my little sister, and I feel a certain responsibility toward her. Now, cop or no cop, it's my duty to find out everything I can about the man she's going to marry. Now, I'm sorry if you don't agree, but that's just the way it is. Absolutely. The fact is, she's just a kid. I'm... What did you say? You're absolutely right. Sergeant Enright is correct. Randy has been lying to us. I want to know as much as you do. Absolutely. On the other hand, there may be a perfectly valid explanation. And if there is, you will go downtown with that sergeant and pick out a set of tails tomorrow for Saturday. Agreed? Agreed. You're a hard woman, Beatrice McMillan. And you are a dear. Thank you, Mildred. That's very thoughtful. You know, Commissioner, it's none of my business, but your sister's a big girl now. I don't think she'd mind if you'd go off to bed. That's not why I'm waiting up. Oh, my mistake. Uh, is something bothering you? Well, yes, now that you mention it, there is. Uh, I'm having some trouble with, um... My mother? Yeah. I know she's a fantastic lady, but she's making a shambles of my house. My coffee pot is missing. She puts empty cereal boxes back in the cupboard. Oh, Mildred, she's used to living in hotels. She just wants to feel needed. Needed. You know what she made for lunch? Oysters Rockefeller. Mmm. Mmm. If I was a Rockefeller, I'd sue for defamation of character. 
I'm still trying to pick little pieces of shells out of the garbage disposal. She means well. That's what they said about Marie Antoinette. I tell you, she's driving me crazy. If she doesn't leave Sunday the way she promised, I'm just going to have to go to my sister's house and wait until she does. What on earth's going on? Oh, nothing, Mother. Just a minor revolt. Sunday, Commissioner. What Sunday? Bastille Day. You feel so sweet, but sometimes I have trouble understanding her. Mother, oh. please do me a favor. Yes. Call her Mildred. Oh, doesn't she like her name? Daddy, will you, will you knock it off? I've got to get some sleep. Well, it was just a suggestion. Proposition. So I'm excessively libidinous. You're a dirty old man. I certainly am. Up. Spencer Tracy and the father of the bride. Good evening, sir. I mean, uh, Mac. I mean, sir. Mac, you're not serious. You mean you really waited up for me? That's terrific. Actually, I want to talk to Randy. Rand? Oh, sure. Little man to man chat. If the dower is over $100, take it. Meg. Come on, Mother, let's go to bed. Leave these two to their men. Meg, your fiancé is a fraud. I'm sorry. Did a little checking of your background. There is no Randall Newmark III. It never was. No, I don't know what kind of a phony line you're handing my sister or who you really are. So that's it. Megan. Who do you think you are, Stuart McMillan? Snooping around behind Randy's back. Please call the heat, darling, or something like that. Don't you think I know all about Randy? You know? Of course I do. Meg, knock it off. It's all right, Mac was only doing his job. You're right. My name isn't Newmark. It's Murphy. Randall Francis Murphy. If you can believe that. Murphy? Dear, that's Irish, isn't it? I was born in Brooklyn, not Rochester. And I didn't go to Chowton. I was raised by the Sisters of Charity until I got up enough nerve to run away, join the Navy. After four years of getting kicked in the butt, forgive me, by uh, petty officers, I decided there was only one thing for me to do, and that was to get out, get an education, learn some manners, get to work. Megan knows all this. The reason why I didn't tell Mrs. McMillan was, I guess I was ashamed of who I was, where I came from. No one holds that against you. They certainly don't. I say, people are as people do. And you do just fine. Stuart, apologize. Uh, no, Mrs. McMillan, please. No, Mother's right. I just stuck my nose in where I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. It's all right. Well, now that's settled. I'm going to bed. Me too. Stuart? In a moment, Mother. Now, don't be too late. Remember, you have to make an appointment tomorrow with Sergeant Enright's cousin. Did I tell you about this wonderful cotton dress that I got for the plane? No. It's, it's beautiful, and it's only $95 a steal. $95? Who's doing the stealing? One for the road. Hey, you know, speaking of Sergeant Enright, uh... I'm new here. I don't really know anybody, and I'm going to need a best man. You don't suppose that he'd consent to do it, do you? It's possible. I'll talk to him first thing in the morning. Brandy, okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Thank you. No hard feelings? In your shoes, I've done exactly the same thing. Well, it's an occupational hazard. I, I've been hit with... Quite a bit the last couple of days. When you two get settled over in Hawaii, why, Sally and I will take a couple of weeks off and come on over. We'll get better acquainted. Good, I'd like that. Listen, it, uh, it really is late. I'd better be going. Mm -hmm. You take care of that little girl. She's the only kid sister I have. You have my word. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night.
well. So? The rats are sniffing at the cheddar. Nose is twitching. Beady little eyes glistening with greed. You should have been a poet, Harry. There's no money in that, my boy. So what happened? One of Mr. Kovac's associates broke into my motel room at exactly 5.51 p.m. The phony report, did he find it? <laughs> he did. It was back in place, but the thread that I'd put on top of it was gone. Terrific. Now, we can expect to hear from Mr. Kovacs by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Count on it. Harry, you're beautiful. The only thing that worries me is taking those Tamco bonds instead of cash. Look, there's nothing to worry about. You understand? I mean, Kovacs are pigeon, but he can't lay his hands on the cash. The bonds are negotiable. The yeah. way Tamco's going, we won't have any trouble unloading him. Maybe so. We'll dump him and get out quick. How's the little lady? You still going through with the wedding, Saturday? Yeah, why not? Uh... I'm in love, aren't I? Oh, sure you are. But what has one got to do with the other? Nothing, Harry. Nothing. Randall Francis Murphy, born in Brooklyn, New York, April 14th, 1945. What about his fingerprints? Well, they check out with the Navy Department and with the FBI. Any criminal activity? No, sir. Not even a traffic violation. And that should put your mind at ease, sir. Well, every now and then, it's good to be wrong. I think he's a wonderful person. Yes? Good. Send him in. How would you like to be best man to that wonderful person tomorrow? Me, sir? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a little scared at weddings, but, uh, okay, sure, as long as I'm not the person getting married. Morning, Commissioner. Morning. Charlie? Hi. Got a lead on the death of that uh, uh, counterfeiter, Pablo Javier? Mm -hmm. Here, take a look. Building's owned by Trans-Alaska Mining Corporation, Tamco. Maybe you've heard of it? Aren't they the ones that... Reopen old abandoned gold mines. Well, that's what they say, but there's something a little cockeyed about that whole operation. That's why the captain had a camera crew working the building the past couple of weeks. Well, what's a character like Pablo... Javier. ...got to do with Tamco? That's what we'd like to know. It's pretty touchy business, Commissioner, because there's a lot of foreign money coming into this corporation. Foreign money, like Japanese money? Yes, sir. They're into just about everything. They've got a lot of money to invest these days. And if it is a swindle, Commissioner, there could be serious international repercussions. What was a known counterfeiter doing business with Tanko, it's a definite possibility. Now, that Japanese national... Uh, Mirabushi, sir? Yeah, Mirabushi. I want to know more about him. The Japanese government put a lot of heat on him when he died. I want to know why. Do you think there's a connection between Mirabushi and Tamco, sir? There's a hell of a connection between Mirabushi and Javier. They were both killed by the same gun. Things are starting to shape up. Oh, I also want to see some footage on that uh, surveillance film. Well, we can set that up, sir. Meanwhile, I want to see that Tamco file, what you've got on it and who's behind it. Right away, sir. Whoever killed Javier and Mirabushi must have had a good reason. But one thing's certain, they're not to be fooled with. Nice of you to come back, Mr. Newmark. I'm sorry it was such short notice. Oh, it's my pleasure, sir. I, I just appreciate the chance to get to talk to you again. Well, I've discussed the entire matter with my associate, Mr. Hagstrom, and, uh, well, I may have been a bit hasty. I like your plan, Newmark. Logical, yet imaginative. Can't expect people to work 24 hours a day. <laughs> no, sir. Your country club... Maybe just what we need, morale-wise. Right, right, right. I, I think we may be able to work something out, providing the terms are mutually agreeable. Well, uh, now, Mr. Kovacs, I, I hate to press you, and I, I certainly wouldn't if I didn't have to, but I, I think I told you I had this note due the middle of next week, $500,000. Well, oh, I didn't realize it was due that quickly. Oh, yes, sir. Who holds the note? Cascade Mortgage Investment Company over on West Larrabee. They're awfully nice people, but uh, you know, business is business. And, well, gosh, if I don't make good on that note, I'm going to lose everything. Well, Dan, I think we can talk to Mr. Ridgely first thing Monday. Oh, sure. I suppose we could do that. I'll be in touch. Thank you. But, um... No later than Monday. Now, you just sit tight. Mr. Kovacs, uh, you're a lifesaver. The, uh, the, uh, term, sir, that I mentioned to you, the $500,000 for 10% interest, that's okay, isn't it? Perfect. Just leave Mr. Ridgely to us. Well, thank you again. And it's nice to meet you, Mr. Haxter. Have a nice day. Well, what was all that about? You had him and you let him go. The trouble with you, Dan, is you don't think. Now, he's got a note that's due. He can't meet the deadline. We take over the note, he's out in the cold. We're sitting on a copper mine worth $10, 15000000 million. That's great. But where do we get the half a million to buy the note? Right out of the vault. The phony bonds? They're as negotiable as cash. Well, that's crazy. 
Mr. Ridgely says we don't dump that stuff until the end of the month. The hell with Ridgely. Now, this whole thing's gonna blow up any minute. Who's gonna wind up with the dough? Not you and me, Danny boy. I don't know, Al. Who's been taking all the risks? Us. Killing Javier. And that Japanese detective that was snooping around last winter. We weren't sure he was a detective. Well, he was looking for something. Now, why do you think I have my boat ready? Because I like deep sea fishing? Look, if we work this right, Mr. Ritchie will know nothing about those bonds being missing. Now, you call Cascade Mortgage Company, find out who runs the outfit, get him on the phone. We don't have any time. I sure hope you know what you're doing now. Okay, the guy getting out of the limo, that's Burden Ridgely, retired Army general. Connected in all the right places. It's all his game. He owns the majority of the stock. Number two man, executive vice president, Alan Kovacs. Sort of a high-paid plunky. Mostly an inside man. Do you have a sheet on him? Oh, sir, they're all clean as far as we can tell. Mostly ex-army people. Now, that's Daniel Hagstrom. Both he and Kovacs served in Ridgely's unit in Berlin a few years back. <laughs> Now, this guy, Harry Anders, he's strictly small time, but he's something else. He could rob the fillings out of your teeth while you're chewing on a steak. Well, what's he got to do with Tamco? Beats me. He was only filmed twice. And that's for sure he's not working with those guys. Hold it. What is it, sir? Pack it up, freeze it. Right there. That man coming out of the building. Well, we don't have an idea on him, Commissioner. And right? Well, sir, I hate to say it, but uh, isn't that Randall Francis Murphy? Friend of yours, Commissioner? In a way. Murphy, well, I can run a check on him. We've already done that. Maybe not very well. Okay, it's two o'clock. Do you have an appointment, sir? We have an appointment at a church in exactly 24 hours. You know, my horse was so slow, it wasn't a photo finish, but there was time for an oil painting. I think the race was crooked. Or, uh, what about the tree surgeon that fell out of his patient? Uh, did you hear the one about the, uh, three fish? Two herring, one smelt. Uh, I knew a guy that was so dumb, he thought Johnny Cash was the dime you put in a pay toilet. the whip so much he came across the finish line riding a meatloaf. <laughs> My mother loves Hi there. Hi. I'm Jimmy the Cat Lady. Will you do me? Sure. I'm Mac the Fuzz. Oh. Oh. Um, are you here for a bust? So oh, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm here to see Luther. Luther? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he's out there putting them all to sleep. Oh, I see. Well, thank you. It's nice to see you. Oh, stick around. And it will be. They put a 200-pound jockey on the horse, put lead weights in his saddle, tied his tail to the starting gate, and that was the horse that won. You know, I can keep you rolling like this for years. I know you're out there. I can smell you breathing. Did you hear about the girl was told she was pregnant? She didn't think it was her. Hail, old friend, well met. Welcome, Commissioner, to the sump hole of voyeurism. You, uh, been behaving yourself? Commissioner, at my age, the closest I get to a Lison de Cœur is writing mash notes to Dear Abby. I didn't mean that. <laughs> oh, you mean, am I adhering to the tenets of virtue? You may rest assured. Oh, uh, say, Luther. Huh? Harry? Mm. Well, he's too small a fish for you to be involved with. Well, I thought you and he might be up to something. Harry and me? That's like serving a Chateaubriand on a paper plate. 
Well, anyway, Commissioner, he isn't very bright, and he's awfully obvious. Besides, if I'm not mistaken, the authorities picked him up in the Virgin Islands several months Virgin ago. Virgin Islands? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, he was doing the old uh, Mexican inheritance scam. You see, he pretends to be a lawyer, and then he sets up a rich mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't make any difference. He's probably out of circulation by now anyway. With his sheet, one more incarceration would have meant 10 to 20. Why? He was seen a couple of days ago coming out of Trans-Alaska Mining Corporation. Tamco? Tamco. It's much too sophisticated an operation for the likes of Harry. You mean Tamco's crooked? Now, did I say that? In so many words. Well, frankly, I don't know anything about the company, but when you're as old as I am, you learn to recognize a certain aroma. It's called the essence of fertilizer. Meaning? Well, an old maxim, but a serviceable one. When a thing seems too good to be true, it usually is. I'm reminded of the exploits of a crafty old gentleman named Charles Ponzi. State of Massachusetts, 1919. Look up the case, Commissioner. You might get an education. I'll remember that. Tell me, do you recognize him? Oh, sorry. OK. Sorry to bother you. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, particularly to any of my friends. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Jennings will see you now, gentlemen. Right this way. Well, come on in, gentlemen. Cecil Jennings. Kovacs, Alan Kovacs. It is a real pleasure, Mr. Kovacs. My associate, Mr. Hagstrom. How do you do, sir? Come on, gents, sit down, pull up a chair. Here we go now. Come on, get comfortable. Say, this is a real pleasure, I'll tell you that. And that company of yours, woo-hoo! Now there is a success story. I, I don't get to meet folks like you every day. Uh, <clears throat> you boys uh, care for a snort? No, thanks. Well, it's, it's not 6 o'clock yet. And I promised the ball and chain that I'd hold down on the liquor until the sun went down. But I guess I could always draw the blinds. <laughs> draw the blinds. <laughs> Mr. Jennings, about that note you hold for Mr. Newmark. Uh, oh, oh, yes, that note, that note. Yeah, let me see. I got it right here. Just get a look-see here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mighty valuable piece of property. Mighty valuable. You know, I got a good feel for real estate, if I do say so myself. Mr. Jennings, let's cut the bull right now. I can see right through you. You're a phony. And a country boy act may work with some of the clucks that come in here to get their pockets picked. But you don't fool me for a second. Now, do you want to talk business? Or do you want to play games? All right, Mr. Kovacs, let's talk business. You must want that land pretty bad or you wouldn't be here. Well, I want it, but I can live without it. So don't push too hard. Huh? Now, I want that note. I'm willing to give you 500000 plus, say, 25000 for your trouble. Why don't we just say a flat $600,000 and let it go at that? Agreed. Hmm? I said that will be satisfactory. Well, all right, then. Uh, you got the bonds? I'm sorry we couldn't get here earlier before the banks closed. Oh, no problem. No problem, Mr. Kovacs. Uh, Tamco, Vera bonds. They're as good as cash. Maybe better the way things have been going for you. I'll just stick them in the tin can over the weekend. They'll be just fine. Ruth, uh, will you please draw up some transfer papers for our first trust deed on Newmark? Let's file uh, NEW 9765. Thank you. Well, this does call for a little drink. How about it? Huh? Hatchman? I'm going to have a snifter. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't give you two cents for that whole state. Too damn cold. But you know, it's funny how things work out. 
I'm making me over one hundred thousand dollars in just three months. Can you beat it? You're a tough man to deal with. <laughs> Mr. Glenn, this is you. This is um, you. That looks it's a little on the lazy side. Yes. Yes. Um, Mildred. Lacy side. What was that? This now. You know that ceramic this dish you warmed your eggs in yesterday? Oh, this is true. Don't tell me it's broken. This, okay, this I'll let you be surprised. Purple, purple festival in gold is a very gold. Gold. popular choice, Miss McMillan. Or combining tulip, oranges, and marigolds. Listen, uh, they ought to send out for a barrel of chicken and a fireball tonight. Don't you touch my friend there. Where do I find your egg beer? Did you try the drawer under the sink? Yes, but all I could find was this. Miss McMillan, if you'd just let me go in there for a minute. Nonsense, dear. You and Sally deserve a few days' rest. Now, dinner tonight is my responsibility. I think that should be quite clear to everybody. You can count on me. Good. Where did you say I'd find your egg, Peter? In your hand. Oh, that's, right. that's the silliest looking thing I ever saw in my life. Now shut up, Miss. Don't you? Or you don't get in you trouble? Me. Don't you? On the other hand, if this, you prefer something a bit more purple, I, I can that's recommend that's our that's American the beautiful. beautiful. Oh, 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 where's Randy? Uh, I don't know. He's supposed to meet me a little bit later for dinner. L listen, Matt, could, could you pick out a flower for me? Listen, could I speak to you for just a minute? Dinner where? Never mind where. You're liable to have his tail. That dress is crumpy. Where's Mother? You're decorating the kitchen in early American gravy. Could I speak to you for just a second? open sleeve over here. Let me try this one. Yeah, right. Would you please? We need Mother? There you are, Stuart. Dinner at 8 sharp. If I can just figure out how to use this oven. Mother, You're where is Randy? You're just going to love this. Here, take a taste. Mother. Careful, it's hot. Well? Well, it's, it's um, different. What is it? Ragu Catman, do of course. Oh, really, Stuart? Your eating habits must be atrocious. Dinner like this is an experience. Mother, I know you went to an awful lot of trouble, but I think. Oh, I... Have you any idea how difficult it is to find fresh goat meat at this time of year? Mother, where is Randy? I don't know. And I wouldn't tell you if I knew. You're being much too critical, Stuart. I want you to leave those young people alone. I am only trying to keep your daughter from making a mistake. Randy, what's his name, is a darling young boy. Uh, I know he's said to us, but he's so charming. How can you not love it? Easily. Stuart, don't you dare leave this kitchen. Yes, Mother. You're behaving like a perfect idiot, and I won't stand for it. I am not. You may be the commissioner of police, but to me, you're still a little boy in short pants, and right now you deserve to be treated like one. Megan loves that young man, and that's good enough for me. And if you do anything to spoil her happiness, I'll never speak to you again. All right, Mother, you win. You win. If he's what Megan wants, he is what Megan's gonna get. For better or for worse, and I shan't say another word. That's my little boy. <laughs> And right now, while I have you in a charitable mood, there's one other thing. What is it? Do you know a nice, friendly judge in your traffic court? Hey, you're smart. What? I promise not to beat you. It's more than once a day. <laughs> you say that now. Something is the matter. What is it? No, not really. Come on, would you like to talk about it? I, uh, I don't want to have this conversation on our wedding night. Um, well, I've just been thinking. I really don't know you that well. Now, look, I confessed all my past sins to one and all last night. Yeah, well... What do you do for a living? I mean, really do. Investments, promotions. I told you. A little of this, a little of that. Mr. Newman. Yes? I do hate to intrude. The desk clerk at your hotel told me I'd find you here. You will forgive me, dear lady. Um, Arthur Porter, sir. Your name was given me by a mutual acquaintance regarding some corporate bonds. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, Porter, is it? Yes, sir. If you could spare me a few minutes of your time later this evening, it's most urgent. Yeah, certainly. Uh, how about my hotel room? 30 minutes. Excellent. Well, please do finish your meal. I'm so sorry to have butted in. Who is that man? Who knows? But it could be important. I've seen him before. Of course. 
The Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. When I first met you, I saw you talking to that man several times, but you never introduced us. No, I think you must have him confused with somebody else. No, it's the same man. Randy, what's going on? What are you hiding from me? Meg. Look, I don't care. I love you. But you're closing me out from part of your life, and you can't do that. I'm going to be your wife. You're right. I, uh... I haven't been fair. But I want you to promise me something. Sure. What I'm going to tell you, you're not to discuss with anyone. Particularly Mac. You can uh, walk away if you have to. I mean, I don't blame you, but you're right. But this is strictly between us. Do you understand? Okay. Gentlemen, we have been artfully had. I, are you sure, Harry? They looked okay to me. <laughs> 22 years of fleecing sheep, nothing like this ever happened before. Well, nothing to do but pack it in. Hang on, Jim. You know something? I think we're onto something here. At this rate, we're onto the unemployment line. Yeah. Look, what's Tamco doing with phony bonds? They're supposed to be legitimate, all oh, right? Easy, boy. If these characters are unloading phony bonds, you can bet they're going to pay a lot of money in order to get him back. At least Burton Ridgely would. Not me. You're not suggesting we shake down a man like Burton Ridgely? What do you want to do? You want to walk away empty-handed? Empty-handed I'll be. Empty-headed I'm not. You do what you like. But this stuff's out of my league. As far as I'm concerned, you're sticking your neck out and you're going to get it chopped off. Come on, Harry, let's get out of here. Good luck, kid. Yeah, operator, I'd like to uh, place a long-distance person-to-person call to Mr. Burton Ridgely. My name is Newmark. I'm in room 452. Montreal, Canada. Uh, no, I don't have a number, but he should be staying in one of the larger hotels. No, operator, I don't know the number. Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. Frank Teasdale. You're damn right it's an emergency call. Cleaned out. Everything. The desks, the file, the safe. As if Cascade Mortgage Investment Company never existed. That's what I'm afraid of. Hello? Hello? Yeah. No, just, just a minute, operator. I'll talk to Mrs. Teasdale. Yeah. Mrs. Teasdale. Alan Kovacs here. I'm trying to track down your husband. I met him recently in San Francisco. What? He is? I see. No, 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 thanks. Sorry to have bothered you. The real Frank Teasdale's in South Africa. He's been there for the past seven weeks. And who? 
That's what I'd like to know. Yeah, Alan? Oh, it's you, sir. I, I didn't expect you on this line. Obviously. What's going on back there, Alan? Go going on how, sir? I had a very strange phone call early this morning. A man wants to sell me some counterfeit Tamco security, $600,000 worth. But that's impossible, sir. I was afraid for a moment that you'd let some of our special offering out of your sight. That all has to hit the market quickly and quietly. I understand. I understand, sir. A thing like this, well, you can see the problem. Still in all, the man knows something. Well, let me check right into it, sir. Uh, no need, Alan. I'm meeting him at 9 tonight in San Francisco. I'll deal with the problem personally. It will be interesting to hear how he acquired the certificates. I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Got to find those guys, Dan. Teasdale, the guy from the mortgage company, and especially that kid. And we got to get those bonds back. And I don't want any of the three of them to say anything, ever, about what happened last night. You know what I'm saying? Sally, I can't get this tie right. Uh-uh. Put your chin up. Maybe if I just wore a dark blue suit. Oh, you mean like that nice one you always wear at a funeral or mm -hmm. helicopter christening? Yeah. Just the pants fit. Well, suck it in. You'll get through it. I am sucking it in. Oh. Sally, will you go talk to Megan? She's impossible. She's a million miles away. Coffee? Well, how should I know? I'm just a mother. Do you think she tells me anything? Photographers. I don't even have my face on. Mother! I better go, Mac. Would you be a doll and get the... Yeah, I'll get the doll. Hey, Charlie. You look very sharp. Thank you, sir. So do you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner. This is for you. Why, Sergeant? Well, sir, I've always understood that the best man is supposed to look after that sort of thing. I have one more in here for Randy. Fine. But aren't you a little bit early? Yes, sir. But I just received a teletype about that Japanese national Mirabushi. And? Well, sir, we didn't get much out of the Japanese government. They identified him as a textile trader. So on a hunch. I sent a check through the Pentagon records, and it turns out that during World War II, Mirabushi was a counter-espionage agent for the Japanese. Had a law degree. Then he dropped out of sight in 1947, only to pop up here again, dead. Seemed rather strange, a man with his background. Very strange, with all that flack we were getting. But now things are starting to get clearer. Hello? Yes, this is Commissioner. Where is the building? Right, I'll be there in 20 minutes. What is it, sir? Well, things are starting to pop. A building was broken into last night. A patrolman caught one in the leg. Ballistics matched it up. It came from the same gun that killed Mirabushi and Javier. Stuart, we have a bride to give away today. Well, not till 2 o'clock. Well, you'd better be there, both of you. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Mother! Oh, dear. Um, oh. Sorry, sir, out of bounds. Oh, good morning, Commissioner. Carry on. And the guy paid in cash. 600 bucks in advance. Lieutenant. Commissioner. Oh, it's a scam, all right. Classic bunco. Question is, who took and who got taken? Excuse me. Sir, have you ever seen either one of those two men before? Never seen him before. Are you sure? Positive. The only guy I met was Jennings, Cecil Jennings. Now, we've got a description, Commissioner. The artist is on the way to work up a sketch. Whoever killed Javier and Mirabushi broke in here last night. Javier probably worked for Tamco. Harry Anders and Randy were at Tamco offices. And right, I want you to go to Randy's hotel room. Stick with him all the way to the church. Take my car. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Callahan. 
What do you know about a man named Charles Ponzi? Ponzi? Oh, that was over 50 years ago, sir. Yeah. Well, supposedly he bought international postal reply coupons and traded them wherever the rate of exchange was favorable. Mm -hmm. Gold for stamps. Within six months, he had 20,000 investors who put up over 10 million bucks. The fact was, he never traded a stamp in his life. I don't get it. Well, you see, sir, the initial investors were paid off by the money he got from later investors. Then they were paid off in the same way, like a big pyramid. The trick is to get out and disappear before the thing collapses. Ponzi's mistake was he just waited too long. I want you to get in touch with the Virgin Islands. Find out about a man named Harry Anders. If he was arrested, why he was arrested, and in particular, when he was released. Yes, sir, I'll get right on it. Teasdale, sorry, checked out early this morning. I didn't leave any forwarding address. You make any calls? Sure, some. But I can't give out the numbers. On the other hand, seeing that you're a friend, he uh, made 10 calls. Uh, I don't know any of these numbers except this one here. That's the number of the Empire Hotel over on Elkhart Street. Look, uh, it'll all be over soon. What? Well, you know, it's all your frame of mind. Once you resign yourself, it's really very easy. About 10 years ago, I was standing in a spot just like this. The seconds were ticking off one by one. And you know, she was a wonderful girl. But then my best man had to come to me and tell me that she'd been taken from me. Oh, I'm sorry, Sergeant. Uh, an accident? No. An insurance man from El Centro. She, uh, left you waiting at the altar. That's right. I but see. the topper is this. Three weeks later, her husband has the nerve to phone me and try and sell me a whole life insurance policy. Well, I told him he could take his whole life and... Well, hello, sir. Mac, it's after two. What do you know about Trans-Alaska Mining? You were at their offices yesterday and the day before. You're having me followed? Or what? We've got a surveillance team working the building. In a week or so, maybe less, we're going to blow that operation wide open. But now, I want to know if you're involved or not. I am not. I uh, considered investing and decided against it. Who's this man? Never saw him before. Really? His name is Harry Anders. He's a confidence man. Several months ago, he was working the Virgin Islands. You were there at the same time when you met Meg. Two days ago, he was seen coming out of the Tamco building. Ten seconds later, you came out of the same door. Now, if that's a coincidence, I'm Daffy Duck. Stuart, Stuart, where on earth have you been? Mother. This is nothing short of disaster. It's five past two. Reverend Coffey has disappeared. Megan's nearly in tears. Mother, it's all right. Reverend Coffey has been delayed. His assistant, Reverend Vandenberg, will officiate. Oh, thank heaven something is going right today. I won't relax until this thing is over. Come on, hurry up. We'll continue this later. This is impossible. We should have been married in City Hall. Well, at least Randy's here. I mean, how would you feel without a groom? Here he is, darling. Everything's going to be all right. Megan, wipe off your face or pull down your veil or something. Mac, where were you? Oh, just getting a lesson in high finance. You nervous? Uh, yeah, a little. Second thoughts? No. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm, I'm just a little uptight, that's all. It's not too late to back out. Look, sis, I'm only thinking of your welfare. If you want to back out, back out. Nobody will blame you. Mac, I know you're worried about me, but I'm a big girl. I really know what I'm doing. I know it's not going to all be lots of laughs and great fun, but I love him, and I'll take whatever comes, eyes wide open. Wish me luck. Luck. Lots of it. I may cry. Me too. It was him, the kid. No mark. He was here, but he checked out. Damn. We're not through yet, Al. The kid is getting married this afternoon. Where? Well, the bell captive didn't know, but the reception is at the Carrollwood Hotel. There's something more. When he checked out, he had an extra piece of luggage, a green attache case that he insisted on carrying himself. 
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God to join together in matrimony these two people, Randall and Megan, pledging each to the other love, honor, and respect. Whomsoever God may join in this holy estate, let no man put asunder. May God bless you, my children. May he shine down his countenance upon you. May his love reign in your hearts. May the sweet glow of his heavenly benediction light the path of darkness and lead you hand in hand to perfect happiness. Like I'm already young. May the rose petals of love and affection carpet the craggy road of life as together you make your way through the wind-tossed storms of temptation and lust Lachaim. Good afternoon, sir. May I help you? Yes, uh, my name is Newmark. Uh, my brother's getting married here this afternoon. Oh, yes, the Newmark reception. That's at 4 o'clock in the blue room. Thank you. They should be here any time now. The happy couple's taking the bridal suite. Would you care to wait in the lobby? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Cameron. Yes, Cameron. Just a moment, and I'll see you. Why don't you let the bell and carry that one, too? Yeah. Mac, I sure hope this Sally can make it to the reception. Oh, she will. She just wanted to go home first and check the baby. Well, I'm going to the blue room and check on the orchestra. Three electric guitars and a bass fiddle do not make an orchestra. Oh, dear. Hope they're not tacky. Well, uh, I think I'd like to go up to the room and freshen up a little. That's a good idea. Yes, why don't we all go, then? At least until the other guests arrive. Now that's tacky. Well, it's ten minutes to four, and we have to be out of here by six, and we wouldn't want the happy couple to be sidetracked by anything. Mac! We'll, uh, see you soon. I'm gonna go to the blue room, make sure your mother doesn't get into any trouble. Did you see that attaché case? Yes, sir. Green leather, 14 inches. Well, I have to find out what's in it, because if it's what I think it is, it all may piece together. The Javier murder and the Tanko swindle. Well, we could also prove that your new brother-in-law is a crook, sir. No offense. That's why you have to go up to the bridal suite and open up the bag. Me, sir? I don't want my mother or my sister to find out I had anything to do with it. Well, that's very sensitive, sir. No. Gutless. Here's your key, sir. Uh, sir? Your oh, key. Oh, thank you. Yes. Is there anything else I can get you? Uh, no. 
Oh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> I hope you have an enjoyable stay. Mm -hmm. Hello yourselves. Listen, uh, we've got about four minutes. Uh, would you we've like got to... a whole lifetime. Might be shorter than you think. Hate to interrupt your honeymoon, Mr. Newmark, but I believe you have something that belongs to me. Randy, who are these men? Open it. I don't have a key. I said open it. Mr. Thackeray, two men on the 10th floor. They attacked Miss Werple and stole her passkey. Hold that elevator. Been a busy boy the last couple of days, Newmark. Randy, I don't understand. What does this mean? Man. It means, my dear, that your husband's a thief. Just do what you're told, and she won't get hurt. Easy, Commissioner. Right there. Let's go. Come on. Get your hands up. Get against the wall flat. Commissioner! Green sedan parked in front of the hotel. Fill it up with gas, bring it around to the back, leave the keys in it. And when I come back there, I don't want to see anybody or your sister gets it first. You hear me, Commissioner? The car will be here in 10 minutes. I'll take care of it myself. What about your friend here? He's all yours. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can I take my hands down? What I tell you? Come on, point the thing at me, leave her alone. Cut the act, Newmark. She already thinks you're Prince Charming. You sure can pick him. Officer, take care of this man. Enright, I want you to gas up that car and get it out back. Operator, this is an emergency. This is Commissioner McMillan. I would like to have 555-2212, please. Callahan, me. I'm at the Carrollwood Hotel. I want you over here on the double. I want a radio device and a triangulator. And there's something else I want you to bring with you. Less than a minute. When did you start to smoke? Just now. Now, let's go back inside. Well, I won't move. You'll move if I have to carry you. Please, don't you sound just like your father. No. You drive. Don't break any traffic laws. I'll be in the back with the missus. Fine, Newmark. 
doing very, very good. You're smart, not smart enough, but you're smart. And that dumb country boy acting is down pretty good. Callahan, you got a fix on their position yet? You got him, Commissioner. They're moving west on 135th Street. All units have been ordered to stay away from that car. Good, keep it that way. Sir, what will we do if they decide to leave the car? I don't know. I really don't know. For better, for worse, huh? It's really a laugh. Police commissioner's sister marrying this cheap hustler. You should have told her. And there's a lot of things you should have told her. Right, Newmark? We'll ditch the car now, in case they put a bug in it. Pull over. There it is, sir. We're going to lose them. Now, get us a cab. Take the bag with you. Remember, it's better to be alive Don Juan than a dead John Wayne. They've stopped, Commissioner. Somewhere near Fremont and 126th Street. Yeah, should I move in on it before we lose it? No, we can't take that chance. But, sir, but I... keep your equipment going. Yes, sir, but how are we? Shh. Hey, taxi. What's the matter, Bud? You're late for your wedding? Oh, hi, miss. Uh, uh, I mean, Mrs. Slide in, you. In front, no more. Where to, buddy? South Bay Marina, main pier. Let's go, Sergeant. We're closer than they are. Yes, sir, but how are we? Just keep driving. Here, sir. Oh, thank you. That'll be all, Charlie. I beg your pardon, sir? Beat it. Yes, sir. Well, it looks as if you got caught red-handed, Mr. Newmark, or Murphy, or whatever your name is. Murphy. That much was true. Things haven't changed much, have they? Beg your pardon? I said Central Security hasn't changed its training procedures much in the last 20 years, have they? I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. And I suppose when you saw that cigarette burning in the ashtray, it was just luck that you knew there was an electronic bug planted in the cigarette lighter. You put that there? That's one of the first things they teach you. I'm cleared top secret. I should have known. Why Central Security? It's a Japanese agent from Interpol who was after Ridgely. Mirabushi? Yeah. Somehow his cover was blown and I got the assignment with nothing to go on. So the plan was to flush him out, you know, catch a thief with a thief. I should have been notified. Well, it just wasn't possible. Only the director and the secretary knew what I was up to, and uh, a man like Burton Ridgely's got more ears in Washington than uh, a Kansas cornfield. And Harry Anders, I assume you arranged his release? 
Yeah, he, uh, is in trouble. He got picked up in the Virgin Islands. How'd you know it was me? A guy with his record doesn't get off that easy without somebody pulling strings. When I got down to the nitties, I had to hope that someone was you. Anyway, it wasn't hard to hook up with him. A couple of nice, pleasant guys, you know, not very bright. And I was just kind of winging it until they told me that the same guy that killed Mirabushi also killed a counterfeiter. At which point I figured Tamco was probably planning on dropping some phony stocks of bonds in the market, which is why it was absolutely essential to get the bonds instead of cash. Why didn't you bust them right then? Well, because we'd lose the connection to Ridgely. Very important to connect Ridgely directly with the forged bonds. And, uh, look, I'm scheduled to meet him a little bit later this evening, if you can arrange to get me out of here. Oh, I think so, and the San Francisco police will even have a couple of plain clothesmen around to help keep your neck intact. Does Megan know? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't about to let her go through the rest of her life thinking that she married a thief. It's a rough life. Mm-hmm. But uh, after all, you forget one thing. She's a Macmillan. Oh, yeah, about that. Um, I think there's something you ought to know um, about the wedding. Stuart! Sally, I thought you were home with a baby. I got a babysitter. What for? Where's Mildred? Stuart, I may faint. Oh, mother. It's dreadful, just dreadful, my poor little girl. Mrs. McMillan, what? That awful man, that Reverend Vandenberg. He was an imposter. My poor little Megan has been living in sin. Oh, mother, I hardly think four hours. Five? You certainly don't think, Stuart. But I do. And I think I'm not going to move one inch until my daughter is properly married in San Francisco tonight. Now. Otis? Yes, my dear. Oh, May oh the bridegroom. <laughs> well, I suppose oh, if he's here willingly, eh? <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. That is a bit premature. <laughs> well, Stuart. Well, one more time. Well? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join together in matrimony these two people, Randall and Megan.